Hello and welcome to the webinar on rupees for API testing. In this webinar, we're going to be talking about how to test your web services using the rupees automation tool. This webinar was recorded during a training session, so if there are some pauses while we ask for questions, that's to be expected. Now for the agenda of this webinar, we're going to go through an overview first of all of web service testing. Uh, the different types of web service, REST and SOAP, and how you access them from within Rupees. We're then going to do a deep dive into testing a sample RESTful web service. We're going to create a sample GET request where we get some books for a website that's an online library catalog. And then we're going to go ahead and create a new book in the system by posting a JSON data packet. After we do that, we're going to show you some debugging and how we, we can um, sort out issues when tests fail, which happens in real life. And so you'll see how you can use some of the debugging tools. And then once we've done that, we're going to move on to the SOAP web service testing portion, where we're going to connect to a SOAP web service that does the same thing as the REST one, provides you access to viewing books and creating books. We're going to connect to the WSDL file where we actually get the web service definition. We're going to get a list of all the endpoints and methods and then we're going to invoke a method using rupees and we're going to see the results. We're going to add a sample test script where we verify the data coming back and then we can actually inspect the SOAP packet being sent, uh, both for sending the SOAP packet and receiving. After that we have a question answer session. So uh, thanks for attending. So what I'll do is just start with an overview. So Rupees, as you know, can do UI testing and it can connect to the browsers, connect to different applications, and we'll have some other sessions on that specifically. But it also has a web service testing module and that can be done either independent of the UI test or it can be done uh, with the UI tests and a common use case particularly for REST is that you might want to open up a web page that's an Ajax application you might want to send some data as a JSON packet to a web service uh, that then up causes the page to update uh, you might also want to then check the, the data on the page in the DOM and then you might want to check the data coming back from the web service uh, so that way you can do testing both by looking at what's rendered on the page but also what's coming back from the browser uh, sorry from the server to the browser in terms of like an, H, an XH, XHTTP data packet. Uh, we also do have the ability to do SOAP testing as well. And so you may have some endpoints written in SOAP more for integration than UI in this case, where you're going to be able to add records or do things through a SOAP API. Then you want to log into the application and, and see if the data actually appeared as you expected. So you can do web services just completely standalone, or you can do them in conjunction with a web service, with a UI um, testing as well. And so what we'll do is, first of all, let's just create a new test. And if anything is not clear or unexpected, let me know. I'm going to assume that, unless I hear from you, that this, you know, what I'm doing makes sense. So let's create a new test. And I'm just going to create them locally for today. And while that's coming up, I've got in the browser a sample. And this sample is available for you to play around with, too. It's our standard library information system website that we have, where if you've used it before, you can log in and you can and create books and the users and, and authors like this um, so it has a UI but it also has an API as well and they're connected so if you add a book to the API it's available in the UI and vice versa um, and the two different endpoints we have are a SOAP endpoint and a REST endpoint so they're good for, for testing with uh, but you could also test it with other endpoints other REST services or SOAP services that are out there uh, I think we have some examples on our GitHub um, repository of integrating with uh, Microsoft Outlook, for example, which has an Exchange Server has some SOAP APIs. And so we, what we'll do is we'll look first at the REST API, which is this one. And this one lets us um, get a list of authors, get books, create books, and post images, uh, get, and so update Im uh, books as well. It also has the ability to send an image, like a file, with something as well. And so we'll, we'll test all four methods, be able to get a book, create a book, update a book, and delete a book. And then when we go into SOAP, we'll do essentially the same thing with a SOAP service. And this is just documentation. SOAP's a bit different because you have a service definition, a WSD, WSDL file, looks something like this. And usually as a human, you don't really have to work with this. What you're doing is you have something, a tool that will connect to this 
Uh, in the case of C Sharp, it might download it and make some compilable code. Java has something similar. What Rapease lets you do is connect to it, download the WSTL, uh, and see it visually, and not only invoke the particular service, which of course you could do in code anyway, but it also lets you see the data being sent. So when it fails, you've got the ability to see the raw SOAP packet and inspect the headers and things that you can't always do so easily if you were just using a code library like Java or .NET. Um, so that's a little bit of an overview of what we're going to do. Um, while I was doing that, Rapiz came up. And I'm going to go in and create locally a new test. So we'll just go in and go ahead and do rest test one. And there's, there's a little bit of noise in the line. It's not sure if that's someone on, on speakerphone. OK, so I'll keep going. And basically, if you're just going to do um, testing of a SOAP application or REST application, you could use the basic option. If you're also going to be doing any kind of web testing with a UI or mobile, you would choose that library because you can always use the SOAP or REST web service as an add-on to a web UI test or a mobile UI test. But if you're not sure, uh, if, there's no, if there's no UI testing, you can always just choose basic. I'm just going to check us on the line. There's a little bit of noise coming from Anitha. I'm going to put her on mute or let me see who else. Uh, I think that's Gary. Yeah, I just muted Gary. So I think that's better. Okay. Sorry about that. So, Gary, if you want to speak, you'll need to just send a chat message and I can unmute you. Um, so, anyway, we've just created a new REST test. So, you, you choose the name of the test. And, again, it could be one that has a combination of web, mobile, whatever it is, and you can always add REST on. So, we're not going to do any web testing in this example, so I'll just choose basic, keep it simple. And for REST, for web service testing, you have to use JavaScript. The RVL visual language is, is great for doing... Uh, you know, UI testing, things like that. But in general, uh, for web service testing, you would need to use JavaScript to use it. Um, any questions so far? Okay, good. So what we'll do now is we now we go into the test and we'll add web services. And so we're going to do REST, and we can add both to the same test. So we'll go in here and we'll say... Um, this is library information, system.rest, that's the name of our web service, and it adds this new control here. This is our REST web service um, prototyping tool, and you'll see on the left-hand side, as we start to create requests, it will add them to this tree view. So what we'll do first of all is, is start with something simple, and we will go to REST, which is this one, that's SOAP, hold on. There it is. And just because of the way this application is constructed, the first thing we have to do is get a session ID, and we have to pass that with the subsequent calls. So that way, uh, when you make the call, it actually has a unique ID. We do this just because in this demo, it's a single shared application. We need a way for the data to be separate. So two or three people using it for testing don't interfere with each other. So we have a unique session ID, and that way the data is partitioned. That's unique to this library information system. But it's analogous to maybe getting an authentication token or a login, something like that. And so this is the actual URL of the REST call. So we'll just take that, and we'll just paste that in right here. And we'll give it a name. We'll call it get session. That's the name is up to you. It doesn't have any bearing on the actual code that's being sent. That, on the other hand, does matter. REST web service, and that's the base. And the method then is session get, which is this one here. So that's our REST get. Okay. Now, before we send it, for this particular web service, we do have to put an authentication key like this. And we do support in. Um, Rapiz be able to put credentials in basic authentication or we could do it through a URL so we'll just add basic authentication and the username is librarian the password is librarian and this sends it through as a ba HTTP basic header like that and if we send it like that it should send the request which is done there's no body because it's a get so I'll just move this up here and you'll send it we get some data back we get a simple connection string um, 
like that session string like that. Um, now what you can do is you can always add headers. So if you want to add a header in HTTP, you can go here and say, well, actually, we don't want XML, we want JSON. So we can change it to application JSON, like that. And we could also add a header for the return content type. And if you want a list of all the headers, you can just use the drop down like that. Any HTTP header is available, including custom X headers. JSON, like that. There we go. So we've now got um, the headers we want. Hit send. And now it's going to give it us back as JSON rather than XML. And we can also view formatted JSON. Obviously, it's just a string, so it doesn't look particularly formatted. Um, so that's the body we get back. We also can check the headers. So that tells us that it's OK. It's giving us information from the server. Um, and that's always available. If the thing doesn't work, if there's an error, for example, it can't get uh, the service, you'll get an error message. So let's put in something we know doesn't work. We'll put in Z. Hit send, and now it gives you a 404 not found. And if you go to the response body, you see something like endpoint not found, whatever the page is going to show you. So you have the ability right here to actually view what's coming back in real time. OK, so we've created our first, I'll just fix that first of all, and I'll put that in. So that's good. And what you can do, as well as being able to create this object definition which is this is the the request we're going to send the content type you could also record this and that lets you actually add it to the test script which we can then so repeats can actually build your test script uh, we won't do that just right now I'll show you because you can also make it manually so I'm going to show you both methods but the first thing we're just going to do is actually just have our request saved so it's save so now we've got our session ID we now want to do something different let's get a list of books that's a bit more useful so we'll go to the book one and we'll say let's get a list of books which is a list of books in the system that's our call and that's our method oops you need that and we're going to put that into rupees and we're going to create a new request called get books and that's the name of our rest call our api call get books that gets us the books, put that in, that's the get. Now we do this parameter, we have this session ID, and that's just the value we're going to put in. So we need rupees to be able to send that value through. We need it to be the session ID we got in the earlier call. And that's fine. So what we'll do is we can add what's called a parameter. And a parameter is not the same as a header. Header is what we send to the browser, an HTTP header. A parameter is something where we want to do a search and replace on the string or in the body. And so we want to create a parameter called session ID. And we can leave it blank for now. And that will replace this with the session ID. Now we also want to set the um, the header. So we'll add a header. So not he uh, yep, that's right. We want to set it to accept application JSON. It does remember it when we've used JSON. Repeat is smart enough to remember the ones we've used before, so they don't you don't have to type them in again content type and there is a shortcut to doing this I'll show you in a minute Hit add. so we've now got this is the correct content type we want for our rest call we could have XML too that's our session ID we're going to send through as a value and we also need to authenticate so I will authenticate again the login name is remembered the password is not and we're going to hit add that's good hit save we've now got our get books now we need to get the session ID and pass that to the second call. That's a variable we get back from the server. We're going to send it. So we can just do, for right now, to, to prototype with, we can get that session ID, go in here, and just put that in. And that's going to dynamically replace this with this temporary ID. And when we get to actually adding a book or getting a specific book, you could have other parameters like the book ID. Anything you want to make dynamic in code, you make a parameter. And that way, it makes this template that you have prototyped um, reusable in, 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 your, in your application, in your test. So we're going to save that. Actually, we'll, we'll actually send it first. And you get back in, in a formatted JSON window, you're going to get your list of books, which will match what's in the application, these list of books. How of the Baskervilles, Arthur Conan Doyle, Murder Mystery. And you'll see here an array, a JSON array with all that same information. Each, or each book is basically a JSON object. Uh, we could get XML, because that's a nice alternative. So we could do application XML, change the content type, oops, hit send, and that will give you an array in XML like that. Very similar, just uh, XML format, not JSON. 
I'm, I'm going to put it back to JSON. Just and there's a reason why I'll put it back. I'll, I'll show you in a second. Okay, save that. So we've now got two calls. One gets our session, and one gets our list of books. Um, so the next thing we might want to do is actually use that in our in our system in our code. And so what we can do is we have the option here to update the object tree. And what that will do is it will turn each of these REST web service objects uh, or function calls really and turns it into a repeat object in the same way if you've used the repeat UI tester to click on a link or a book um, or on a table or an edit button and you have those UI objects that you'd see here like that you actually have the ability to have API calls and we have them right here and that way you can actually call the API in your test script in exactly the same way as you would interact with the UI and there are two ways of creating this script. One is to create it by hand, one is to actually record the script. And I'll show you both methods. So the first thing we'll do is do it by hand. So I've got my test, it's right here. And I can use drag and drop to do this. I can go in here and say what I want to do is first of all get my session ID. So I need to execute the call. I don't need to pass any specific parameters. I can override things like the username and password. I can give it a different credential. I could override the URL with a different URL if you wanted to try on a different server with the same function call. Anything you saw in that in this uh, previewing tool, this basically REST building tool, can be overridden through code. So the, the method, the URL, the uh, content type headers, well, any of the headers, in fact, the credentials, the parameters, and if it's a body, if it's a post, you can send the body through. So we, we basically build out the skeleton here, but then the object that's created can be used. So we'll go in here to the object tree and we're going to execute that method. So we just go over here and we drag that method over like that. And that's going to get my session. And I can do it also by typing. So if I hit the enter key and do SES like this, I've also got the ability to do it directly without in, in, by typing. And once you've executed it, we want to get the actual request sorry, response body object. And that will give us the object of what actually was returned. So we'll go get, we'll get that, that's our session ID. And we only have, that's I said, unique to this application, it's just being used so that when we get the list of books and add a book, uh, all that data is essentially tied to our particular session. And if you're doing it at the same time as me, you'll get a different session ID and that library website won't mix our data up. In real life, it would be a login or password or something that, that you need. Okay, so once we've got that data back, we then want to get a list of books. So we'll do books and we do SES, get the book object, get response object, like that. Those are just optional parameters. Oh, actually, I need to execute it first. So let me also execute it like that. So the first, so we have a command execute and a command to get the object back and do something with it. And then what we might do is put a breakpoint right here so we can verify the data. Maybe one right here. And then we can run it in debug mode. So let's do internal debugger and we'll hit play. Hopefully it'll work. Let's see what happens. So it's undefined. And I do step over. Okay, we have a session ID. If you can see that on the screen, we've got that session ID. I can also look in the variables right here, and I'll see it as we're running. That's our session ID, and I'm going to step over again. That's going to get the list of books, and now it's being stored in the object. We need to get that object, so step over that, and the books is something. Let's see what it is. It is an array, which is correct, of books. If you look in the first one, we'll see right here. It's a JavaScript object, an array of JavaScript objects. Each object is a book, each, and it's an array of those books. Now, one of the important things here is you'll notice this is completely uh, serialized into an object. So I don't have to do any special code to get the, the JSON and do anything with it. Uh, because Rapiz uses JavaScript as its language, it could natively understand the data that came back from that web service, and it automatically has it available as objects. I'll show you what that means in just a second. However, if we had chosen to use the XML form of the REST request, that would actually prevent us doing that. You, you can still get back the object in text. So I could do book, you know, JSON. Imagine this, if this was XML, it would, be this, it would work as well. I can do get response body text, where we have that option. Um, but that's going to get the text. So if you have an XML only 
uh, web service that only returns back in say XML or maybe it's RSS then you're gonna have to pass that yourself but if you can get the object data back as JSON which is generally better for rupees you can use this response body object and we're actually deserializing it automatically and that saves you having to have a separate piece of code to do that and that means if we go into the code window what we could do is we can we can create a loop so we can do for var i equals zero i is smaller than books dot length it's a javascript array oops semicolon i plus plus like that and then what, what we can do is we can basically just do tester that's our standard tester object dot message and i'm just going to basically log out the name of the book so book name and it would be uh, books i if i look down here i can see what its, its field is it's called just name like that okay and then what i'll do is i turn off the debugger stop debugging and run without debugger and hit play and it should run this time oh let's have a look what's going on um, you know what? Let me run it with the debugger. I think my, I know, remember this machine's got an issue I was dealing with. Let me try that. And it should run. There you go. So there you've got a list of books Atonement, Bleak House, Oliver Twist, Nickel and Silby, and so on and so forth, which is all the books basically here. If I wanted the author, I could do the same thing. I can go in right here and I can add the author name. And it would be books. And if you don't remember what the field is, which I actually don't remember, I can always comment this out. Put my breakpoint here again. Actually, I'll do it right here. And hit play. And then I can go to books in the watch. And open one up. And I'll see, okay, I want author dot name so actually it's a sub property so it's dot books dot author dot name so the debugger is your friend when it comes to this debugging stop debugger go back to my code to save it and uncomment that and it should this time have the author as well oops there we go so it's gonna run and there you go So that's a simple set of get requests. The next thing to do, we'll be talking about maybe creating a new book. And before I do that, any questions on what I've shown so far? I think The X part. Well, this is a web service call, not a UI call, so there's no real X part, unless I'm misunderstanding the question. Well, this isn't getting it from the this isn't getting it from the page. Uh, I'm showing you the page just so you know where the data is coming from. It's coming from a, a, a REST service, nothing to do with the page. There may not even be a page. I mean, it happens to be in this case. This is an API call. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, you can certainly get the XPath if you were to record a UI test. I could learn the table and I could get a list of the, the books and I can do um, you know, UI querying using the DOM. That's definitely doable, but this is separate. This is basically calling an API. It happens to be the same data as this table, but it's not this table. Sorry if that was not clear. Okay, cool. Um, so the next thing we'll do is add a book, and then we'll talk about the, the SOAP uh, service. So in terms of adding a book, um, what we could do is create a new book. So what we'll do is uh, learn the, let's go back to here. 
and we're going to go back to this and we're going to add a new now one thing you can do which I didn't do is you can clone a request and that's useful because this session ID this content type and these credentials they're the same every time I mean, I'm always logging in with the same user at least for right now and I'm always using JSON at least for right now so I don't want to have to do that every single time so rather than doing new request it's a little bit simpler just to click on the one that's nearest what you want and choose clone and we'll call that create book There we go. So you can see you can go between the two. They're right there. And what we'll do is change this from a get to a post. And we need to check our API documentation so we know actually what we're supposed to be doing. So let's go back a step. And we'll go to book. And we're going to go to post, which is right here. Uh, where is it? Yep, adds a new book to the system. So access this red service, use this URL. So it's the same URL, it's just a different method. And we have to, but the difference is we have to pass it the book. Okay, so what we'll do is we're going to go back in and we want JSON. Something like that. So that's the kind of data we're going to send. So what we'll do is go back into rupees. <coughs> and we're going to change it to post, which we did already. Parameters, header, those are all fine. And what we'll do is go in here and choose JSON and we'll post it, paste it in. So to create a book, we do need to give it an author ID and a date. Well, the date we'll do we'll deal with that. That's a that's just the format that our system expects the date to be in. It's a um, number of seconds since the beginning of time. And the genre ID, the ID, and there's the name. So we'll create a new book. So we'll just try this out. And we'll basically create a new one called, uh, what have we done, Charles Dickens? So let's say it's, what have we got? We've got Christmas, Christmas Carol. There you go. So we'll do Christmas Carol. A Christmas Carol. And it's not out of print. And the ID we don't need to send yet because that's going to be generated, so we can we can skip that. The genre ID we do need to know that. So what I can do because I don't know these values for this particular application, I can just get a book and I can just simply use the same data. So what I'll do is I will go back to my tester and I will put a little breakpoint in right here, and I'm going to run it with the internal debug, and I'm. Yeah, save that. It's a good point. Save it first. And I'm just going to check the data to, to get an example of what values it expects. So it's useful even to help you create the request. Okay, so uh, the author ID is, is Hound of the Basket. Three is Charles Dickens. The genre is two. So that's good. So we'll go back here. So the genre is two. Author ID is three. And we don't need the author's name because that's generated. So that's all we actually need to send it. So that's good. So we'll stop the one we were playing, the one we're doing. And we'll go back to our prototyping tool. And we're going to try and create the book. So we're just testing it out right now. This is not in code. This is just us sending it directly. So we'll hit send. And let's see what it did. Response header. OK. That's good. Response body. It came back with something. ID 15. So it actually added our book and we even got the ID value. So that's really good. And if you want to verify, we may see it in here because this is logged in as a different session. We actually won't see it in this particular web list web list because we're actually logged in as the API is using a different session than our than our login here. Uh, but we'll see it if we when we get the book list. Okay, so that's good. So that's our author. That's our book, ID 15. So what we need to do now is just save the request. Update the object tree. And if we go back to our code view, we can now add a book. So add a book. Grab create book and go to object tree, which is over here. And that's the create book one. We're going to execute it like that. And we're going to go get the, this time, what we want to get this time is not really the whole thing. We do want the idea of the book 
it'll be useful to get that. So we'll get our request body object. Yeah, we don't need those parameters. So we'll just say um, var result equals. And that's what we need here. The only thing we have to do is we do need to give it the, the actual book. Now, because we're using JavaScript, we can actually send it in code. So what I'll do is I can actually go back to here. I'll cut that and paste it in here. Var new book equals like that. And it is JavaScript. So that is she's a JSON object. And since that, that book is already in existence, we'll, we'll call it something different. We'll call it a Pete Christmas Carol Volume 2. Then we'll like that. And we just need to pass that to our REST call. So we're going to create book dot and it's set request body object. If it's an XML thing you're going to send, you could send the text of it. But if we just do this, it's going to automatically serialize it into JSON for us. So we're going to send it a book. We're going to execute it. We're going to get our book object back, which will have the ID value populated. And we want to see that in action. So we'll put a breakpoint right here. We also might want to print our books out again. So what I'll do is I will just go in here and we will basically make the same call again with our books and we should see hopefully one more. So saying a comment so I know what I'm doing. Cool. So just to recap, we've got our session ID, we're going to get a list of books, we're going to add a book, get a list of books, make sure that you know check and then we'll add a check at the end once we make sure it works just to verify the result is one more so we could do that. So for right now we just want to try it out so we'll run it in debug mode with a breakpoint right here hit play it's going to hit that point and we'll get a result when I step over it so step over and oh we're actually getting something weird back so when that happens what we can do is go into variables Let's see what we got back. So there's our new book. The result is undefined. Okay, set request body object. Do execute. And so what I when I get when I get a weird thing happening, what I might want to do is get the actual text. Oh, hold on. I see what the issue is right here. Typo there. So let's do it again. Let's go and do play again. There's our result, undefined, which is correct because we step over it. All right, so it still wasn't that, it was something different. So let's put another breakpoint right here. And what I'll do is I'm also going to get result text. Maybe the results coming back are not serializable as JavaScript because maybe there's some other error. So what I'll do is get the actual response body object and change that to get response body text. That's going to get the text back from the server. Okay, so debug, stop debugging. And then we're going to run again. Uh, where's it gone? There we go, play and debug, yep. Okay, so we want to step over that and we want to get our result text. All right, so we got result text and we can see what it looks like by going to variables, test, uh, result text is right here. Okay, and then we're going to step over. Oh, so we're actually getting a server message back. There was an error deserializing the object of type. Okay, so the date we're sending to the server is actually not valid. So we're getting an error message back. So when we sent the request to our service, we're sending a date that it doesn't like. Does not start with date. Okay. So that was our issue. The date we're sending is here is not valid. 
actually that's a good point because the the format doesn't match so what I can do to help me debug that I can actually go in here and I'll actually add actually these things to probably just put the breakpoint right here again and run it in debug mode so the error from the server didn't like the date we're sending and you can also if you wanted to you could add that as a as an error check so one of the things we could actually do it's a good test when things fail is we can go into here and say ses create book dot we can get is an error status so that way we can actually check if it's an error and then with that way we won't try and deserialize it so there's things like that you can do as well So what we'll do, we're just going to run it again quickly uh, with, the, with the debugger on. So stop debugging, hit play. It's going to break point, uh, go to variables. That's good. Get the test, get the books, get our first book. And there's the right, there's our date. We had the wrong date format. So that's the date format we're expecting. So we need it in that format, not the one we're using. So I'll change this right now. And that's just because the web service we're using actually is a WCF web service. And basically, it expects it in a format that's a bit strange. Thanks to Microsoft. Like that. Uh, hold on. There you go. Get that the right way around. So that's our date. And so what we'll do now is we can stop the debugger. And this time we don't need to stop there. We want to stop right here. So we'll do play. And it's going to go forward. That's good. So we'll step over that. We'll step over that. False. Step over that. Actually, we want the response body. And let's see what happens. Yep, and this time it worked. So this time the data is good. There's our result. And before we go any further, let's just check our results. We're going to variables so we can check in real time. Go to result. It's down here. And there's our book. And it has an ID of 16. So we know it's actually succeeded because we sent it without an ID. And we're getting back the new primary key. So that's good. So we can continue to run the whole thing. And there we go. There's a list of books. We add the book. And we now have one more book right here. And what we might want to do is just add a little bit of code in here to actually get the ID value. Book ID equals, oops, book ID equals books dot id tester dot assert actually tester dot message new book id now one thing we would probably want to do in real life is we want to do a little bit of a test to make sure the book got added and so what we could do is we can get the book count and we can make sure it's one plus what we had before. So here's our list of books. We're going to do var book count equals books dot length. And let's add a verification. We'll do tester dot assert equal book count increased by one. And what we do is we want to check that the book, book, uh, count is equal to the new book count plus one. So if that's correct, then we put in one new book. So let's try that again. Don't need any breakpoints. Let's try running it. Oh, it failed. Why did it fail? The two objects are not equal. 16 and 18. 
Oh, it added one. Oh, it added two more. Why did it do that? That's that is a good question. Hmm. Four equals books. So one is eighteen. One is huh? Looks like it's added two books. Unless I'm frying the thing twice. Oh, anyway. well, I have to investigate that. That uh, looks like I'm adding the book twice, or it's maybe it's. Huh. That is. That is strange. I didn't. I have to look into why it's doing that. Anyway, what it should be doing is giving you the book count as one, but it seems to think I've added two more books. Um, so that's interesting. Actually, what we could do in real life is look at why is it doing that? One, two. Because that should be 16 there. So what, what I'll do is just to help me out, I will go in here and I will log out the current length after each one. So what we can do is just go tester, tester dot message, book count after adding, books dot length. And I'll do that before we add, which is right here. So, and I'm calling it once. Okay. And what we'll do is try playing that and see what it does. So it should give us the two counts. Oh. Let me comment that out. Because I don't want to do that. Stop. So I'll just play it again. And it will give us the two book counts. All right. So it starts the test. Book The count before adding is 18. The book count after adding is 19. Okay, so that's correct. And so for some reason it's checking 20. So I'm losing my mind somewhere. Oh, I know. I'm adding it to the wrong one. So when you have things that you do that are unexpected, just add a little bit of logging and because that's the current length, that's the original length. So let's try playing again. There you go. And now it makes more sense. So that's a, an example with a where you actually are getting a list of books and you are adding a book, getting a list of books again, checking that the count added, and you can then do obviously more verification checks. It is just, it is just ultimately just a JavaScript object. So this books array, you could go look in it and particularly look at you know books zero dot name, check that the name is what you expected, and, and in real life you probably do a more detailed verification. But uh, in the interest of time, I'm not going to do that right now. Um, any questions on the rest? calls I've been doing and the code. Um so we're putting the creden the credentials right now are being stored um in that um, in the basically the object file, they're actually stored in the in. If you want to see where they're physically stored, they will, they're part of this object definition. So when we actually have this create book or get books, um, they're being stored in that, and it's in a JSON file. Um, you can you could not put store the credentials, and you can then pass them in. So what we could do, for example, is if you have them somewhere else where they're encrypted, you could have, for example, uh, let me just take this get books one. If I grab that one, set you could set a credential like that. And that's a login and password. So you could store it somewhere else and have it encrypted and then decrypt it. Ultimately, it has to be decrypted at some point because you have to be able to pass it um, into the function. But it could be stored somewhere else and then passed in like this. But 
Um, I'll have to double check what we have. I don't. I don't know if we have a built-in function in Rupees. I know we can access other libraries in .NET and other. Li so if you have a credential library you're using, we should be able to access that. I don't think we have a built-in one uh, that I know of currently. You're welcome. Let me double check. Uh, yeah, we can do. The, we have a central credential store, but yeah, I don't think we have a decryption unless we added it. Let me just double check. I know. Someone had asked for this, and it's in our backlog. I don't know if we added it yet. No, I don't think so. So, I think we believe we've got we've put some sample code on our website where you can call a .NET library to do it. But there's no built-in function currently. Okay, and the credentials could come, could also come from a database if you want to use our database accessing tool, or they could come from a spreadsheet using the spreadsheet object. Um, that's definitely doable too. Um, the other thing you can do, which I didn't do because I wanted to show you how the code is constructed, there is a shortcut, which is if you go into the REST editor, uh, if you go in here, for example, and I do get session, I can actually send the test object, the test call, I mean, and I can then actually record the script like this, and that gets the session ID. I can then go to the list of books, you know, fire that request off, and then hit the record button and it builds a recorder. You can also interactively verify the response. So as well as being able to do it all in code, you can go in here and say, you know, I want to verify that the, the genre is two. And I want to verify, yes, yeah, so let's add that one. So add verify. And maybe add a print is false, verify like that. And when you do that, what you can do is you can then do create script. Yep. And that will automatically add the JavaScript right here. So that's another option. You can use it. You can use the Rapiz, um script building tool to actually write the code for you versus doing it by hand. Now, there's some advantage of doing it by hand. You have more control over it, and you can. And it's a little bit, the code can be a little bit simpler. Uh, we pass, you know, because we'll pass all the parameters through every time. It's going to pass. To, it's going to validate the, the objects, but when you're doing quick prototyping, it can be quite handy just to have it build everything for you, and then you can make changes if you need. But that way, you could do it this way as opposed to doing it by hand. But just wanted to show you what's going on behind the scenes, because otherwise it will look like a look like magic, and this won't make a lot of sense. So I wanted to show you first. But you can do it this way, and it automatically populate the headers, the body objects, and things as well. Um, any questions on the REST functionality? Um, so the next thing we're going to talk about is SOAP. Now, we I think we have about 10 minutes left of time, so we may have to continue this uh, another session, but I can at least start it. So for SOAP, um, it's a little bit different because SOAP has a structured definition language, so you don't have to build as much yourself. In REST, you've got to prototype the, the, the calls out, and we can then save the definitions, which is, which is nice. Uh, you can do that very easily here using this tool, but you do have to spend some work building it. So when you're going to do a SOAP test, you go to Web Services, and the same repeat task could have a SOAP and a REST library, so we'll just call it Library Information System. And we'll call it SOAP, like that, to differentiate it, hit Create. And the difference with SOAP is you put the URL to the WSDL file, the Web Service Definition Language file. And I put this in earlier, it comes from right here. Whichever, whichever web service you're using is going to have one of these things, and it gives you this XML description of the actual web service. And so what we'll do is we go back to repeat, we put that in, hit get WSTL, and it goes out and gets the list of all the functions. So these are actually the exposed functions that are available. And so when I want to get, for example, a list of books, there's a book retrieve function, looks like that. I can actually then go to that function and actually invoke it. Oh, hold on. Let me close this down a little bit. Uh, yes, save that. So this is basically where we're going to be. We can view what's being sent and the evokes we actually call the method. Oh, actually, there it is. That's why. So let me. Oh, it's got confused from what I was doing before. So let me just. I'm just going to. Closes a second and we open it. Oh, 
All right, I'm going to close some of these tabs off. Okay. So basically, if we go to Web Services and Files, we'll have our services right here. There's our SOAP, like that. There's our function, get CL. There we go. And you'll see right here, we have the function. So we have author retrieve, retrieve by ID, book delete, book insert, book retrieve, book update. So we'll do book retrieve, just gets a list of books. And this one doesn't have any input parameters, so I can just invoke it right away. And it returns back here. Oh, it returns back an error. Why does it, what's the error? So let's have a look. And in real life, you do get errors. Internal server error. And the issue is unauthorized. We've got to authenticate. So we have to authenticate first is good to do so actually it will give you whatever message comes back from the web service and the web service sends back errors in XML so you can actually you know check for that programmatically and um, what we need to do is go in here authenticate so we'll call this one and so with soap because we have this WSDL language we can see what the parameters are so I can just go in here and say value would be um, librarian and the password is librarian can invoke that and that gets me back an authentication flag which is true because it's correct if I put in the wrong password it's going to come back as false I can also record these steps just like I did with the rest if I hit record it's going to add that connection and that will get added to my test script automatically so that's a nice feature also and especially because soap is more complicated this is actually quite useful and so then what we'll do is we'll go back to book retrieve that doesn't have any input parameters it just returns a list of books Hit invoke, and now we get back a list of books. If you look here, we'll see in the XML view, you see what the raw data being sent back. That's the SOAP data. But you can also see graphically right here what came back. So an array of books, and we can collapse a couple of them. And we can make move this a little bit. And you'll see right here, we've got all the different values. So let's go in here, close these down. And what do we want to verify? We might want to verify we get the right number of books. We might want to verify that we got a single book. So let's verify the length. Oops, say that again, sorry. Uh, yep, right here, length. And so what we'll do is we want to record this. So we hit the record, that retrieves the books. And we now want to verify. So I'm going to click on this and do verify. I might also want to verify a specific value so you can verify that. And that's recorded our connection and it's recorded our action. And so we can now do create script. And it shows you right here the script is created. So if we go back into our test script, which is right here, You'll see we've got the soap. So if you ignore what's above, that's all from the rest we were doing before. That's all rest. Down here is the soap. And what we've done is we've insta instantiated the, the soap object. This is basically inst instantiates this particular endpoint. And we've called the connection authenticate method. And you can see here we've got the parameters we're just passing through as parameters to our test call, username librarian, password librarian. That gets back a session ID, which is being stored. We handle that for you automatically. And then we're now executing the book retrieve. And then what we do is we get that, res we have a response object. It's just like we have with REST, we have a get response object right here. And we're getting back in a, an array. Now we, we've verified a bunch of different values. It's verifying. Um, everything you see in this list. So we might decide to, to narrow it down. So if I go back into my SOAP tool, I can invoke it again, like that. I can record it again. And this time I want to verify with the checkboxes, I can actually uncheck the different things I want to verify. So I want to verify, so I just want to verify the length is 14. So this time I can actually verify more specifically rather than trying to verify every single thing because otherwise you might get the, the results differently in a different order. You might get a book missing. You might just want to verify we get back the order and you might want to verify one of them. So we can say verify that that body is 14. Sorry, this one here is the age. So we're going to verify the age. We're going to verify the 
uh, the the name of the author like that. So you can you can add more detailed specific because otherwise you're going to verify the entire object and all its values. And there may be things that are like ID values that are transient that aren't going to be the same every time. And that makes you gives you a flaky test. So you can verify whatever properties we want. And then you can create a script. That's fine. And go back here and you'll see we've now added some more specific functions right here. And then we can get rid of this one we had before. We don't need that one. And we get rid of that. And now we've got a bit more specific. We're authenticating, retrieving the books, verifying the result. And what I'll do is I'll just comment out the stuff we did before with, with REST. So we can just test this piece out. Hit save, hit play, and it's now going to do that. And there we go. It invoked the SOAP request. It logged in with the librarian and librarian. And it got us back a list of values and it verified that the value of the length was correct. So we have 14 and it verified that the ages, the author name of two different books was correct. And that's a very simple SOAP request. And one of the things that will happen is if it doesn't work that we were lucky these, this uh, SOAP request did work first time. So that was really easy. But what you might find is it doesn't work. You can actually, when you actually call something, so let's say connection authenticate, and invoke you might want to see not just the result like this which is nice and pretty you might want to actually see the raw request is being sent like if it doesn't work is it the test that's broken or is it the actual um, web service that's broken and so you can inspect the soap packet that we're sending and maybe you'll look at this and go wow this is this is correctly formed soap why is it giving you a weird server error or maybe you look at this and go oh yeah this is different than we expected so that way you can inspect the the um, messages being sent and you can expect, um, expect the results coming back, including the SOAP response. So it gets you the ability to, to use a nice GUI interface to send things, but it also lets you see the raw values that are being sent behind the scenes. Thanks for attending the Rupees Web Service Testing Webinar. If you have any questions, please add them to the comments on our YouTube channel. And to watch more videos on Rupees for software testing, for Spira Team, for application lifecycle management, please subscribe.